So I think after hearing the radical message, sometimes there could be like a rejection of practices and things that were done in the past. Potentially, not for everyone. But that sort of happened here. But yeah, I'll just present like meditation as just a tool. It's just something that can help the body. Because when we're when we're out in society we're very much just using the intellect and we're kind of refining that part of the body. And then we lose touch of what's underneath that. We lose touch with our bodies. And so, yeah, it could just be a good tool to kind of take a step back, relax, and not engage in the usual way that we're expected to. We're expected to know everything, know what we stand for, know what we believe, know who we are. But when we take a step back, then, then we're able to kind of fall back into this kind of original unknowing, this space where we don't have to have our shields up. We don't have to have our protection mechanisms up and attempting to protect us. And sometimes when we let those walls down slowly, when it's time, then we get back in touch with that original vulnerability, that original sense that seemed to form when we were very young. And we really lose touch with that sense because over apparent time, there's just layers and layers on top of it protecting it, not wanting to show it to others, not wanting to show how vulnerable, how needy, how needy that sense can be. And it's, it's not a negative thing. This sense of separation is needy. It longs for, for wholeness. It longs to be part of, it wants to feel complete again. So when that original sense of separation is really just revealed. It's allowed to be in its rawness. It's 
sometimes it might feel like you're going backwards. Like you've made all this progress and now it seems like the neediness or desperation is even bigger than ever. But it isn't that you're going backwards. It's you're just getting to the core, the core of separation, the core of the self. the core of I am. The majority of us are operating from trying to answer that, who am I? What is my identity? And it can be an uncomfortable thing to just sit with not knowing the answer. No one knows who they are. So sometimes the seeking can seem to intensify if there isn't a relative okayness with discomfort. Because the sensations in the body will never be only pleasant. It will most likely be a mixture of the good and the bad. And when we're done trying to chase only the good, there's potential for more discomfort to come up because it might have been suppressed. The feeling of meaninglessness and hopelessness that might have been suppressed and never confronted. So it's not that anything is wrong. It's just the other side of the pendulum. The person really thrives on hope and meaning. And when that sense is confronted, or when it's dissolving, things can really feel hopeless and meaningless.
So it may take some apparent time to just be with that discomfort, to express it, to work through whatever, whatever's coming up. And I really thought that this was a beautiful, it was a horrible time, but it was a beautiful time to really see the whole life of Suzanne in reverse. We're able to see how the identity got so strong. And you're seeing it and feeling it as it's falling away. You don't have to bring on, you know, the fear and like be with it. But this is, I think this is more um, kind of training the system to be okay with general discomfort. So that when there is an opportunity where the fear can't be avoided anymore, then your body is a bit more accustomed to intense mm -hmm. sensations. That's my understanding of it because, you know, in one way, nothing can prepare you for, for like that really terrifying sense, just like panic and things like that. But I do think that you can strengthen the body. I do think you can strengthen the nervous system, get it used to feeling a certain amount of discomfort. And in doing that, you can also soften the seeking because seeking is always just wanting a better experience. And when, you're, when your system is more okay with the good and the bad, then it's not running away as much. Yeah, because there, there really are no rules to this. And you know, there are people where um, a sudden scene can happen in like deep despair. But, you know, if that happens, that happens. But personally, like, I wouldn't, I don't encourage that. Because one, it didn't happen here. There was more of a, a sliding into it. And even though it was still difficult at times, it was still gentler. You know, the system was like slowly getting used to the terror of not existing. <laughs> you know, I do know someone who had a lot of trauma in the body. And, you know, when this shift originally happened, uh, you know, he went back to drinking just full on and it just wasn't a pleasant time. The character was able to just freely express the way it wanted. And then there was this taming down and this processing of all the, all the energy that was there and Yeah, the best thing is just pretty much moment by moment. And it was never a known thing if or when this energy would be cleared out. It was just more, this is what it is. Yeah, I just wanted to add for me, it's um, 
it's kind of blurred between like with the drinking, you know, I took years off drinking too. And then when I first heard this message, I whew, went full blown, you know, yeah. and then, um, I think, and then it calmed down and everything went back to, you know, uh, balance. And then I feel like since, especially since really connecting with you in this, in this environment, the energies are stirred up and I feel that it's hard sometimes for me to, to, to know when it's the seeking energy to where the body is trying to find relief. And it's such a, blur. I mean, sometimes I can see the difference like, oh, this is just the seeking energy, you know, but it's very, it's, it is hard to, to decipher. And I try not to focus on deciphering it and just be in it. But I think there is a, there is a difference when it's the seeking energy escaping um, versus I think when the body needs a little support. And I, I think that's something. That's a good point. Yeah. So sometimes it really is, it's such a blurry line and yeah, it was such a, it wasn't even a balance. I don't know. It just figured itself out eventually, but like, yeah, this body sometimes it just wanted comfort because it was so raw. It was so, you know, vulnerable. And yes, there were times where I just allowed myself to have junk food and just like nourish it in that way. Um, and obviously it's going to vary for every person, but like, I don't know, I just listened to the body like, and, and was more kind to it rather than judgmental of no, this is how it should look mm -hmm. all the time. No, it, it just constantly fluctuated and there was a getting used to, okay, this isn't going to be linear anymore. Yeah, sometimes I feel like recently in allowing all this to happen with, with what we're talking about, I felt like there was almost like I was resisting my body's desire to find comfort. And I was like, whoa, I don't want to resist that. And, but I felt it for a minute. It was like, okay, so I'm denying my body what it actually needs right now. In a sense, like that's what it felt too. So there was so much dynamics in it all the time that I, I'm really just being in it when it happens. And again, not judging just really trying to, okay, and see where it's coming from. And I think you've been helping me a lot more with that lately. And it's, it's kind of, ooh, it's kind of calming down for me, but I was getting nervous there for a minute. I'm like, I don't need another, <laughs> what happened, you know, in the beginning, I'm, I don't want that, but it, it is, it is like you just said, it's very um, organic and it's just working itself out. Yeah. But I just wanted to add that. Nice. And, and like, you know, when I was talking to that friend who went back into uh, alcohol and stuff like that, like I met him after the, the extreme, just the character going crazy. But there were moments where I was really concerned that um, I didn't know what was going to happen to him, you know? Mm. And this was all new to me too. So, you know, and in the end, like... I was really shown that it does work itself out. It, sometimes it needs to express in a not so desirable way. Um, but if there isn't like a, oh, fuck this. I mean, if there isn't that, and if there is kind of just a sense like, okay, you know, my body needs to be addicted to this for now, for some reason, like it, it can come back to balance if the emotions are allowed. Just mm. okay. Express the anger. It's okay that, you know, that anger is coming up. And yeah. Yeah, I think you're, you're helping me see that a lot too is just letting the feelings flow no matter whatever is coming up like if I'm having a drink and then it's all still about the triggers where is that coming from like where is that coming from why do you why are we in this situation why do we go to this you know so it's helping me really you know I know all kinds it always comes back like at the end of my seeking journey before I found this message it was all coming back to the body like I was all the spiritual seeking led me to the body you know and recently I was brought back to that book, The Body Keeps Score. 
mm-hmm. and releasing that trauma. And I thought that was really poignant how it came back around. But, you know, I, I, I just think you're helping so much and I, I really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, thank you. It's my joy. I, enjoy it. <laughs> I love it. Thank you.